Right away, let me invite uh, Mary Bawine. And of course, we also have uh, Asha Batenga, she's here. Yes, yeah, so uh, Mary, just come over. Thank you so much, our previous speakers. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you so much, Asha, for being part of this amazing story. Uh, business equilibrium is changing a lot of uh, our mindsets. We are learning to share these experiences. You know, most of the times we have so much to learn and to share, but we don't have a platform. This is really amazing, and we are, we are, we are blessed to be part of this. Yes, so just to tell you the story of Bex by Mary, I started way back in 2017, not so many years ago, but I will, I will tell you what I've learned in just these few years has been very, very impactful, both to me, uh, to people that are, that are looking up to me, to my family, even to my husband, by the way, he didn't know he was getting married to a banker because he got married earlier, that was uh, 2016. I totally had no baking knowledge by then, <laughs> so he literally didn't know that I was getting into a baker's life. So this has really changed a lot about our story. Um, basically, I started this business through just writing down, uh, writing down an idea. I was employed before with Africa Uganda, and I was doing international roaming, more marketing. So I like expressing myself. So I looked through after my first baby, I was like, what can I do to actually express myself more? But at the same time, have family time, and at the same time, grow my entrepreneurial skills. Because you all know being in office is quite, it kind of deceives you in a way. You're in a comfortable place, just smartly, you know, speaking to poor people around you, but you literally have nothing. If they take you out of that office, there is nothing you can say you're skilled about because you can't pull your computer work to, to the market, you know? That is their work. So I looked through us like, what can I do? I, I tried to utilize my maternity leave to learn quite a lot. I was receiving data since I was working for a telecom company. So I said, instead of spending all this time on social media and just maybe chatting with friends, let me try to also learn something. So. One of our gifts was an oven from my wedding. <laughs> yeah, so I said, okay, have an oven. Why don't I just try to bake, you know? Just like everyone baked in COVID, eh? uh, just try, you know? So I tried, but then with a the mindset of, this could become my business, you know? So I tried to learn more and more, and uh, I remember my, my very first attempt that was successful was on my brother's uh, uh, wedding lodge, that was in October. Uh, I the wedding was in December, so I told them, you know what, guys, I'm providing cake for your wedding lunch. They didn't know where it was coming from, I didn't tell them I was going to bake it, but I said, I have to do something perfect. So like, we've all had, I had contacts of people who were already doing this, I tried to call a few of them, ask them what do I need for this and that. It is a welcoming industry, if you're there and you're maybe starting out, don't be afraid. All you need to do is just do good work. Eh? That is all it takes, basically, to grow in the industry. Um, I remember I got my first wedding cake four months later, not for my brother. Yeah, that was, I think, around, um, if it's October, yeah, around March. So, this first wedding, I was like, okay, this is like the biggest gig I'm, I'm holding on. Should I resign from my job? And I was like, no, I can't resign. I still need capital to, to invest and buy tools and everything. So I did it and it was amazing. And I think that kind of like gave me a lot more joy. Uh, I've learned from this journey, Bex by Mary, I've learned to ask questions. I've learned to do research because the market is very, it's growing and the trends are changing. So you, you, you need to actually be very aggressive when it comes to learning. You need to be able to learn 
and also make friends with people who are doing something that is already better than you, so you learn and grow your skills. Uh, the other thing that uh, they can speak about my journey is uh, I have learned to use social media so, so well. When I was starting out, my page was opened right in 2017. And right now I have over 11,000 followers. Now, out of 11,000 followers, it's like I've created a certain market of my, for myself. Out of that, I post at least every single day. Now, out of 11,000, I can't fail to get at least 20 orders a week. You get what I mean? So you may not really need to have a shop, you may not need to have the money to open a shop, but out of creating that market on social media, it can really help you grow. And I've tried to utilize also the other channels like Snapchat. I know it's quite difficult to, to use, yes. I've tried to use Instagram, and I have received big orders from strangers that I've never met because they simply like what you do and they go on and support you, yes, because they know you're consistent, you're always posting something. So sometimes even, amazingly, people who know you so close may not give you that big order that first time, because they know your journey, they're like, okay, three years, not yet a good, you know. But in other words, try to market yourself. So marketing has really made me such, such, such like, it has helped my journey to grow so fast. That is one thing I will tell you. And, um, yes, uh, Mary, uh, we already took the discussion because uh, uh, it was basically first uh, introduction. I know you're following up, and, uh, but I'm also trying to catch up. Okay. Yeah, so, um, well, basically, um, I think that that's, that's, it. that's not part of the introduction, right? Okay. Yeah, but I think we can now uh, uh, probably have you, uh, you know, after a short okay. introduction, I will have you back, okay. and then we basically continue. Yeah. Um, Asha, you, you may have uh, as well actually take your place. Well, Asha is also uh, a partner with, uh, with us, and uh, as you can see, uh, she is, uh, she, 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 she's actually been very generous and very, uh, she's worked with us, and we thank, uh, we thank you, Asha. Yes. You're welcome. Wow, that is a deep talk. That's <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi everyone. You have all been so quiet, just listening and listening and listening. Now it is time to also say something. Turn to your neighbor and tell them how pretty they look. <laughs> if it's a man, if it's handsome. <laughs> If you're sitting next to a baker, just tell them to show you their nails. If they are painted, please tell them Oliva. So he said, now that you smile, I know you will keep smiling. Because clap for all the previous speakers, you have been denied all well that. Yes, they have done a very good job, a very good job. This is good. Um, my introduction is also as long as Mary. It said I went to go for Chesney. <laughs> because Beck has a lot to brief people. We work day and night, so we can never summarize. <laughs> Even when the cake is going, you're like, I have forgotten this one. Let us add on this one. Okay, so Julia said, that's our life. <laughs> They're engaging you and you're feeling them when they all look at you like, what am I saying? I'm speaking to myself, why is Russian or French? But when they come, I'm like, uh-huh, they are getting it. Even if you don't get it, you just clap. <laughs> <laughs> it will motivate you. Yeah, um, I've not been in the industry for a very long time. I've been there for five years. Um, Aries, I've been sharing my knowledge from day one. Even when I was, I think, months old, I would answer questions. That is, that is who I am. So uh, I know most of you have heard my story, but there are those who have not. Anyone who has heard my story here? Eh, my God. Okay. Now, about my story. My story is, um, is a funny story also. Um, I've never been a baker. 
We don't have any beggars in the family. And uh, I've never imagined myself begging. I've even ever fantasized begging. You know the things you fantasize growing up? You want to be a fashion designer, you want to do this, you want to do moto, yeah? those things. Eh? Begging was never one of them. So um, at yet, I, was, I started working hard. I started working in my senior six vac uh, when uh, the CEO mentioned that he sold uh, cigarettes <laughs> in high school. I remember one thing that I used to sell in high school, trips. I used to sell trips. <laughs> I tell them I went to the trade show, paid 10 k We paid 3 k and the rest is mine. So those shitty things we do in high school <laughs> to survive, eh? pocket money. Anyway, yeah, I was that even prefect, so I had I had that privilege. So fast forward, my first official job was in senior six vacation. My senior six vacation came in. In school, I thought that I have to work in vacation, but my mom never agreed with it because yeah, this is my little girl, where she going to work. So it was hard for me to convince her until I told her, if I work, I'll pay 50% of my university tuition. So it was like a day. And she was like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'll be saving and I'll pay 50%. So under those terms, I started working. I got my first job. It was in Walker's house at a, a coffee shop called Panorama. I didn't have any experience, but when again a salad came, I went, I told them I worked in some restaurant in uh, Kenya, Kenya. So the manager looked at me, I am so young, this 18 year old. <laughs> Just told me, okay, we will train you. So they trained and I started working. Um, I, my biggest trip was customer care. I used to smile at everyone who cared. Some people even sometimes would look at me and say, but you don't stop smiling, but I was. I was very happy, so I would get the tip all the time. So one of the clients who used to, to come regularly asked me one day, how much do you earn here? I'm like, uh, I think it was 90 or 120. They would give me transport. So they're like, uh, how would you feel if you work for me like double your salary? So I was like, double? I think the client thought maybe I'm saying it's too little. I'm like, okay, triple. I'm like, yes, 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 triple. <laughs> so immediately I was promoted to another place. Um, I started moving like that before I knew it, it was time to go back to the university, but I continued working. Um, I started a, a shop. I started a shop, I sold women's accessories, all those things. And uh, then I went, I got a job in the NGO, which used to make me travel a lot. <laughs> Along the way, I quit also that one. Then I did project management. I, I opened up another shop, then I started selling things at home where people would pick and not pay. Have you experienced those things? Eh? Where they tell you end of month, eh? my salary is coming. And you count your company, eh? this is like going to be too early. Month ends and you have 200 k no product eh? that I went through. So online became also hard. So um, then I, I went into construction. Construction was like the biggest thing I did. Uh, that was from 2012. I was into construction. 2000, actually, 2011, 12, 13, construction collapsed. Now, and when you were talking about loans, one of the things why we collapsed because we became too ambitious. I remember I used to wake up every day and map out my road. I started to drive through Changa. Kisasi and look for sites to sell building materials. And then I would get the sites. Because first of all, I would be putting on heels. I loved then, I loved short dresses. Because I started begging you before I became a tomboy. <laughs> but before I loved short dresses, I would put on my dress, go to the site, and people would deliver a woman who would actually sell materials. You know how office people put on? They don't put on began or right? They put on their knee skirts tucked in properly and then some people would run, they would think I'm KCCA. KCCA, mm -hmm. you're so like, you know, but I'm selling materials. So with this kind of approach, I got so many clients and we got so excited. I would walk to the big sites in Kampala, met the tycoons, we discussed, we are doing this, so before we knew, we went into the back full swing because some plant at the end of month, so before you know, You've got, you've got 200 million, you've taken it back. You go back, get another 500, you take it back. So you get excited, yeah? Little did we know, 
that the more some clients are trusted, the more they don't pay. So time came and clients stopped paying, and we had huge projects. We had started uh, production, they did papers, concrete products. We have gotten financing for equipment, and clients are not paying. We started losing. We had grown our capital to a billion shillings. We started losing money. We lost homes, we lost cars, we lost everything. You know, coming from these ends, and go down, not sew, but sew, <laughs> like that. <laughs> By end of 2013, we've lo we had lost everything. And um, it was the hardest time of my life. I was like, okay, I have worked. I've never said all my bad days. We went to the park, they were out doing what? We have never settled, but I have nothing to show. So you know that place where you're feeling sorry for yourself, I was sorry for myself, I used to cry, I used to eat. Those of you who know me, I eat a lot. I used to eat and cry, feeling sorry for myself, maybe go for some fellowship. My 2014 was that my mom told me, you know what, since you studied IT, go and practice your IT. I refused. And, and um, Yes, usually I forget to, to say this. I managed to pay my 50% at university. Please get up. <laughs> because I was working, I paid 50 and my mom would pay 50. Even thank you, I said, no, you can't stop. You have proved that point. I was like, but I'm earning. Let me pay. So yeah, she would feel sorry. You know how our parents are one hour and again at the university, but now they are failures. If you bad for you, and everybody was more colleague. But I was just sinking. 2014, I was sinking. I was really, really sinking. But um, they say, the breaking idea. So the breaking idea, 2015, kicked in. We were a group of from fellowship people saying, what can we do? What can we do together since we are many? You know how? People feel like now they are friends too much. Eh? <laughs> they can do business. I'm talking about things like liquids so or what? Me, my head, I'm like, hmm, me nothing. So I was like, but my strength is marketing. I'll market for you guys. Do whatever you want. Me, give me what you're producing. I'll market. So they're like, okay, so we were seven people starting. We had one person who had an idea of making said cakes. So I'm like, if you have an idea about cakes, let's do cakes. So, we divided. Actually, I'm going to do marketing. You're going to do delivery. And these people, uh, there were two, two couples who were married and they had full time jobs. Actually, that group, I was like the idol person. They all had commitments. So, I'm like, I'll do the marketing, but the rest I didn't want to know. I didn't imagine making. So, Valentine's Day was around Valentine's time. I go to my social media and I post to have Valentine's cakes. Maybe I get 40 orders. It was like, I think, a week to Valentine's. I get 40 orders, and we don't know how to deliver. We don't know. So we start bringing people, yeah? Um, I remember there was a guy, they told us, um, that one will help you. Because our friend knew how to bake, but she couldn't even design. But only the home cakes. You know those things you bake for your kids, yeah? Mm. Those things. So we bring in a guy, now to come boy, you're just by a bad guy, he has game, took too much, I can do this, I found out, you told me that I go, what? Like, Hannah, ah, we have our guy. The guy was supposed to come three or four days to Valentine's. I didn't show up. So we are going the guy not picking, we are panicking, we are what? And no one knows that people. Everyone knows me on social media. Because I'm not reading the ad the advert, so I'm like, we did it. I'm like, no, you guys, you can't. You're going to embarrass me. Now, in the meantime, you are like sending in money, especially for abroad. Cake. Wine, flowers, cake, wine, I have people's money, people I don't know. Some like people, we can't, we have to do it quickly. If you can't bake, bake. Finish it, we shall figure it out. Wow. Everybody was disastrous. Three days in Christine's house. Imagine, you know, you're not showering, you can't go back to your house. Some people are mixing, some are delivering. It, it was chaotic, chaotic. But I had this goal of like, we have to deliver these 40 orders. We have to deliver these 40 orders. It was like, maybe after we can eat. But these ones have to go before we deliver the battle for my clients. 
you, you let, I collected all my family members to drive things around. But I didn't want to come and become help me. You're going to help me deliver this. But become help me. And we had electric, el electricity problems. Electricity had gone out. Phones are on and off. I go charge at the neighbors. I come back. I talk to the client. We are bringing. You put it Pass it hazard. Literally. There was one that was going to Entebbe. Yeah? That client was in dire. And there was jam that day. The client was like, you know, I've seen Asha Watenga on social media and I trusted her. And you have stolen my man. I'll take one of the The client was like, make sure when they reach there, they take a picture with my wife yeah? and you send that picture. It has been one hour. If it is not that, I'm going to embarrass you. Oh my God, you know you're dealing with that. I was torn. He worked. But you guys, we finished the orders. Yeah. <laughs> we delivered, I, actually, I delivered myself at LDC when it was, I think, between 11 and midnight of Valentine's. I was like, I have to deliver the last order. For well, some I even wrote, eh? straight from the oven. Eh? But I was like, I have to. I reached out. <laughs> and uh, the person who, who was receiving, took that to me like, you have survived. <laughs> yeah, so that was like the official cake thing, Aida Fest, and most people had to start waiting after that experience. Everyone was like, okay, we wanted this, but I, we don't think it's working. We are family people, we are business people. So the first eight couple dropped off. I was like, okay, to judge Obama for Angola. Along the way, I still continued with my marketing. I didn't mind about making that call. I didn't see myself completely. Uh, then the second couple dropped off. So now we are three people. We had given my husband work to manage the accounts because we know he's good with numbers. So now it is me, my husband who knows nothing. And the other one who is also not yet in a hundred percent. When we were in uh, June, she quit. She's like, I can't. I have work, I have this. So now I was angry, I was so angry. I was like, you know what, Asha? You have an order, I had an order for like in three days, go to Cafe Java's, buy the cake, brand it, cake clean, walk out of this thing. So that was like plan A, yes. My husband was like, but after you have done so many things, these things you can't do. If there is something you've not done, maybe selling dead bodies, what? <laughs> <laughs> this you can't do, so I was like, no, not baby. I, I actually, I reminded him that, my daughter, two years ago, asked me to bake cake because they at school they told them, go bake cake, go tell your mother to bake cake. I went on YouTube, got a recipe, baked it, and she ate and she was like, this is like the dance. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but it's cake. So imagine that is how bad I was. I was like, imagine even a young child can know how bad it is. I can't bake. I was like, you can't. Actually, you can't. So I was frustrated. I just decided to sit down and start researching. I'm like, but if I don't nail this in time, I'm going to get my plan with sieges. Okay. I got my bundles, 2K. Yeah, I was giving 2K bundles at night. I go to YouTube, if you could send me to some sites, I did research, writing down, they put the pro like a lawyer, then zero one, no water. My God, I did the first recipe. It just is like a mixture of almost so, <laughs> so it, and I one bite like this, I spat it out. I was like, "What is this? What is this?" The recipe I followed. Don't, don't, don't. Why am I getting this test? Oh, it was a bad product. I tried again. I tried you before it was hard. I was like, "No, YouTube. These people are liars. Eh? They gave us recipes, but they are not complete." I was frustrated. Then um, I did the order when I almost gave up. I put in the cake and I forgot to put something. I'll not tell you because it's my signature to date. I forgot to put something. Then when it's inside, I'm like, oh my God, I need to add this in the cake. But it's already the cake. I don't need it. But before when that cake came out, it was the cake. It was the cake. I was very happy. I gave everyone. Today it is my signature to Wasn't that good? No. It was good who made me forget, yeah, because I kept doing the same mistake over and over again, expecting different results. So that is when 
kick started. Amazing. Larry, um, uh, probably you will tell us, uh, since you are a uh, tech artist, yeah, and uh, I've seen your demo, it is so beautiful. Yeah, so how is that relating to, uh, you know, to your branding and how you were, uh, you know, and, 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 and your customer perception of who you are? How is that relating to that, to, to, to your brand as Mixed by Mary? Uh, thank you, Julia. Yes, I'm excited to share about my, my artistry and uh, uh, should I say decoration skills. Uh, these are skills that I've been developing day by day. I never learned anything in one week or one month. I have learned to, to, to allow myself to grow and uh, I have learned to do research. Whenever I see something is not perfect as it should be, I have learned to take the extra mile, even if sometimes it involves the cost of maybe buying more data or spending a night awake just to perfect that one thing. Um, I take my social media very important and I take my clients very, very important. I, I like them to see perfection because then they can trust your work even when they have never met you. Uh, so my skills have really grown day by day, like I've said, and uh, I've learned to do everything that I produce from my paper it should be better than the previous one I've done, even if it's the same design. Yes, that's how critical and probably uh, perfectionist I'm learning to become. It's not so good to be perfectionist because sometimes you, you will do one cake over many times, but if the end result is going to send you out and promote your brand to be the best that you can be, then go for it. Yeah, sometimes it will cost you more icing sugar, sometimes it will cost you time, your delivery may to reach later, but at the end of the day, when the client is happy, you're sure that your brand is promoted and, and you're going to get past that client again. Yeah, so uh, my, my, should I say my decoration skills have uh, grown. And I can't say that a cake that I did make in 2017 can look the, the same in any way, even when it was probably the same flavor and all day. Still, it, will, it is much, much better. So my skills have grown uh, through also, I've learned to follow brands that, that have good work, both international and local. I, I usually check out so many people's work that, are, that have good art when it comes to cake decoration. I look at Asha's work so much, I look at uh, William's work so much, I look at Tabilo's work so much. And I'm sure some of you here, if you have Facebook pages, I'm following you and maybe you don't even know. Yeah. So I try to follow trends when I'm learning something new. I always try to go through what is trending both locally and internationally. You know, you'll find me in groups of bakers in, in uh, uh, Zambia, you know, just to try and learn something extra. Yeah, so I think that's what I have to share about. Uh, Steel, um, what has worked for you? With regards to marketing, we have we all have different experiences with uh, you know with marketing. Okay, for me, I use uh, maybe probably social media. Pinterest works for me, or probably uh, YouTube. What is basically uh, working for you as as best by me? Okay. Uh, uh, what has really worked for me? Like I've told you, first of all, I I try to engage my friends on Facebook before I even created the page because I knew if I have over 700 friends, if 500 of them follow me on Facebook, that's a good start. So I created the page first and uh, go to know that well, if I have an Instagram, I can even post once and the post appears even on Facebook. So I went ahead and created the Instagram because it also has its, its, its people that maybe may not even be on Facebook. Yes. I've tried to, to try and learn and be like, okay, well, how do I record my work? Maybe I could start training. That would be another maybe side income. I'd be like, well, social media can help me market that. So with all this, I, I will tell you social media actually works perfectly. The other thing you can do is uh, utilize online branding tools. 
I've used a poster my wall. I don't know if any of you have seen it before. I design my own artwork for different promos. When it comes to, let's say, Valentine's, when it's Easter, there's one running for Easter, actually. I go to these free websites. You can do, they have tools for, for let's say, where you can upload your picture, you can edit information. They have very good graphical, already existing posts that you can edit and post for your own business. I've tried to utilize those. There's one called Canva.com, which I use to create my own business card. If you get to see it, it's all my creation. I realized that you're starting as a banker. It may be a challenge to market yourself when you need to pay money for everything. So you need to use, use the skills that you got maybe from uni. If I, was, I did computer science, so I have some bit of knowledge when it comes to computers. So I said, okay, well, this, this, some of these systems online that are free don't even need those skills. So long as you can search on your phone, you just type poster my work. You will check, check out our uh, posters to use, let's say, for marketing cake. You will check them out, edit, put your information. Yeah, so that is one way that I brand myself. So whatever I post on my Facebook or my Instagram or my Snapchat should be perfect by utilizing some of these things. Eh? Not just posting words of hey, but please come and buy cake from me and what is boring. <laughs> Sometimes people are very visual, they need to see videos. The other thing that has worked for me, that is working for me currently, is YouTube. I recently created my YouTube channel, and I'm uploading videos. It's one way that I'm, I am utilizing on probably knowledge sharing, getting feedback from people, and also, yeah, getting people intrigued and know who is, what is better than Mary, what do they do. Yeah, so the different social media channels have really worked for me. The other thing that has really worked for me is a uh, phone, WhatsApp. Yeah, uh, there is a, uh, when you are using business WhatsApp, I think there is, a, there is a, an element where you can actually do broadcasts. So I created my broadcasts. I know I have my contacts from A to Z. They are over one, I didn't even know I had over 1,800 contacts already in my phone. If, if, if all those people are broadcasted once a month, you're sure you will have at least 100 orders from them. So that has really helped me so much. Whenever you have something new, you don't have to spam them. Like, and, and interesting, the message goes as if it's personal. They can't know that it was a broadcast message. So they will, you will start with, hey dear, go and this up you've never even greeted in a month. So they'll be excited to, you know, listen to a greeting from you. Then a few hours later, post your product, you know. They be excited and they respond really fast. So that is how I get my Christmas orders, that's how I get my um, Easter orders, you know. It's just a matter of getting more da data and sitting in one place because you have to, to respond to 1,000 people at the same time, you know what I mean? Because the broadcast goes at once and they start to respond immediately. So you should be fast enough eh, to, to be able to, so that they actually think it's real time and you're speaking to them personally. Yeah, so those are the channels that I've used for my marketing. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Jerry, for that. Um, I think social media is, uh, is really a, 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 it's a must for everyone, right? Yes, so let me just invite Asha as well. Um, Asha also, uh, well, I know you answered part of the question, uh, which is about uh, how you put yourself in the big net and all that. But how immediately, like how did you, how did you actually build uh, your market and, you know, how did you get yourself out there, um, apart from the 40 orders, which, which you basically uh, know as uh, the kind of the story, but how did you actually continue from there and basically uh, gain your market growth? Um, yeah, like uh, when we're all getting into business, we I think uh, that uh, our friends, our family, they will be on board immediately. So that is like most times the mindset we, we all have, but they are the biggest disappointment. Uh, me, they are, there is family that is supported me and friends, but my immediate family, my siblings, they never disappointed me. They were my guinea pigs. Eh? I would practice and I would send to them to, to test and give me feedback. Um, my sister, the one I follow, is a blunt person. 
she did eat something and called you that you come pick your rubbish from my house. <laughs> but she was real. Eh? Uh, and uh, when you want real feedback, you go to the real people. So, and I never gave free samples. I'll make them pay for them because I'll say, I don't have money for ingredients. At least pay for the ingredients. So, usually it would be like it's a rip off here, yeah? like, yeah? one up well to come here. Yeah? This thing has too much sugar, this thing. So, that kind of feedback, it helped me to get out now with my weaknesses and my strengths. So, when I mastered one flavor, which was chocolate, it did mean that I'd mastered everything. I had to work on how to master all these other flavors. So I had to make sure that I'm testing it out. I'm testing it out on my siblings. Then um, the online people, like Mary said. Um, I've always been uh, an online person. I don't know if I credit it to the information technology. I started like I started computer science. Maybe that is like an added advantage. But I've been on social media since 2009. So I have grown on social media, therefore I'm growing with on social media. When we started off when we were doing the selfie ghost, now business and family and you get that kind of thing. So I know people have seen my reputation and would easily trust me. So if you if you hear that they sent me money and I don't know them, they have seen me around. So that was like very big support. Um, then immediately, uh, like she said, I created a Kekli page. A, a, a page for Kekli. I, um, I, I made it official. When I started out alone, I went and registered the company. It was the first thing I did. Then I created a page, a business page, because I had my personal page where I would do whatever I wanted. But now it is business. So I had to create a business page outside my personal page, which really helped me. Um, and then um, I had so many friends on Facebook. Still, I had to create another Asha Batenga page, which has also come in handy for me. Uh, you saw the other time I was making noise about it, how it has been like uh, made verified with a blue tick. If I have a blue tick, please grab. <laughs> Those things are, yeah, I don't know, film stars, what, what. So they get me Asha, I have one now. Glory be to God. So, Kekli helped me, Asha Batenga helped me, and um, I said it like, then it was just Facebook. Uh, Twitter was too complicated because uh, usually it has uh, the corporate Lugambe, so the Cape Lugambe wasn't trending that much. Instagram wasn't there. WhatsApp wasn't, you know, WhatsApp was there. In uh, 2015, we had WhatsApp. We had WhatsApp, but very few people were in WhatsApp. So Facebook was my biggest tool. Amazing. Uh, well, still, still uh, you know, looking at. Uh Area of marketing. By the way, looking at marketing and branding for business growth, because uh, you realize that uh, marketing, uh, maybe with your, uh, with your craft and with your, uh, with, uh, with your uh, get around, uh, you know, uh, with your work, but the certain skills are quite very much important. And marketing and uh, basically financial knowledge and how to, uh, you know, handle uh, the different aspects of the business are very important. So. Let's now look at, uh, we're we'll looking at marketing here. So, um, how did uh, orders come in here? Uh, well, there is this thing that uh, I think we should revise and see if it's really feasible. There are no seasons and uh, high seasons, right? In uh, the banking business. But is it, so, is it, uh, is it really so, so impacting on business? Because, I mean, if you keep marketing and you keep yourself out there, will you, uh, will you Actually, we start from the orders, probably in the low season. Uh, so, what 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 kind of mismatch is there, and uh, well, what's your experience? Do you have low seasons and do you have high seasons? Yes, they could be there, but is it possible to uh, to make fairly more sales in lower seasons? And how do you do that? Okay, um, this I I, I thank God. I thank God that yes, I can have a low season, but I have never gone a day without an order. So I have never been there and I don't have orders. That has never happened. That I give glory to God because I may not be the best player in the world. So um, the most challenging uh, time has been for me personally the election week. 
when the internet blacked off. That was the most challenging time for me because uh, there are clients who order from abroad and we only keep on WhatsApp. And now they need to give you a number of a client a way to drop the cake to and you cannot access them. That was a very challenging time. Actually, I first stopped some orders. I worked on those that were already there. Then I stopped taking because it was a very big challenge. Now, most of us have been hit badly by COVID. So bad. Even the next words I will say some will be like, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID, I made the most money in my entire five years of baking. I know it was a hit. I know it hit us badly. When they announced events are off, no weddings, no what, I panicked. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Talking of refunds, you have already used this money. Uh, like Philo said that sometimes you want to buy these things, those things, those things. So when sometimes a customer deposits, you're like, ah, we don't want to buy this. You re-inject in the business, kind of. So imagine you have like 8 to 15 wedding cakes to refund and you don't have, you have some of the money, but not all. So it was, it was scary for me. I didn't know where the country was going. I didn't know, I panicked. And um, I started like refunding people. And um, along the way, it, it was actually not as bad as I thought. Um, the, the best wake up I got when a client uh, told me not to pay her three million and she had paid three million already for her wedding and she was like, no, it's okay, I understand, this is nature. Keep it, keep it. You know, you have already set up like a three million of like, I'm taking back this money and it is right in front of you and someone says, it's yours, yeah. That excites me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that gave me some bit of positive energy. I had to sit down and read strategize of like okay now how do I get things to class but are stopping at two no cars are moving all cars were in the compound looking at you like we are useless and you are useless you know yeah COVID showed us that at a certain point you have to be useless with whatever you have looking at you but it is useless so I look at them and I'm like okay I collect my brother guy five of them some had even like quit on life. Some like you guys, what is your biggest issue? Food, what, what? I'm like, okay, I'm going to be giving you food daily. I'm going to be giving you everything that day. All I need is you to appear here every day at seven. You collect these orders by two, you're done, and you go home. From two now was the problem. And also having double tiered cakes. And it's like, now where, how do I deliver the double tiered cakes? And I feel sorry for myself. Then, um, I, call, I, I contacted my adopted father. I was like, you know what? These things, I think some cakes orders can't take what? I can have a van here. Can you bring it to you? Like, it's not allowed. We need an official sticker. No, this van has no chairs behind. Give me one commission. It will be you driving it. I'm like, yes, I can drive a van. I get to the van. I bring it to you. I would reach and the is like, stop where is the sticker. I'm like, I'm just saying the sticker. It is cake. My t-shirt, it is cake. They are on duty. Check behind. And there are cakes. And I would go through the road roads. I would deliver cakes. All the sensitive cakes. You would have for me. I was in that <laughs> I got and I met clients. I met clients. I met clients. I met people who have been supporting me for over years who have never seen it really helped me. I it it was it was like mind blowing. We had many orders. The orders were good. There was a time when we were there joking and we were like, hey, this lockdown should not end. <laughs> like a joke, yeah. But in actual sense, people were beaten badly. Then I did free delivery services to my clients. I created a website, and that website has come in handy. Even when Facebook is down, my website is working. So uh, I, I, um, I did, uh, I, I met. I, I, I made it like it is convenience. Where are you? Okay, I'll send you for the or I will come myself and deliver. And this kind of helped me so much because I got one on one with clients, I got feedback, and the business was growing. So that is how. So, um, before I have uh, Mary back, um, well, just uh, 
I mean, like, brief. I'm happy to pick something from that. Um, from the fact that uh, she was actually, she made the most money, even when we think it's a loss season. So I want us to, I wish us to rethink, probably, are there loss seasons, or it's all about me becoming more innovative, but, uh, you know, more strategic in how I work. Because you just, okay, posting, blah, 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 that's so. And then probably when the season is low, you know, the good as are also low, what do you do? So, um, 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 to wrap it all up, Asha, like, uh, what's, what, what are the pinpoints there? Have you had a low season and have you had a high season? And why haven't you, uh, you know, uh, uh, gone a day without an order? Um, the product. Like I said, I may not be the best baker, but I have learned that game. And I take feedback very important in my business. Uh, so, um, my biggest market, other uh, than social media and the marketing, is referral. I get so many referrals. Sometimes people call me and say, so I'm talking with my number, and I don't want to show them that I don't know so and so. You understand? And this one, so from Mukono gave me your number, and you're like, yes, that is my client. But in actual sense, you don't know them. I get so much business in referrals. When people eat, sit at a, at a cake table when they are cutting, and they ask to make this cake and they share that number, those people usually come back to me. So that has been like my highlight, making sure that I am there when they call me. Then I'm always alive on social media. Some people tell me, actually, you're very busy. How do you handle this? You, you do WhatsApp, you do cake shop, you do cake tea, you do your personal things. They say when you want someone to do something, give it to a busy person. I have to create that time. I am alive always, and uh, it has kind of helped me because my visibility, uh, we have challenges. Someone posted yesterday on a certain group and said, a client has told me to send them the, my picture. Do you understand? Maybe if you ask me for such a thing, I just go copy my page link and I send it to you, go see my profile. You understand? Some people are just, uh, even, it's even a guy who wants to just see you even waste your time. But when you send them, to that professional side, eh? they'll be like, oh, mumase. So you have to be available, you have to be alert. Yes, there are no seasons, but a no season has never affected me. Wow, that's quite uh, interesting. I think, uh, let me have now Mary back. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for that. And so I think um, we realized that uh, so-called low seasons may not be really, you know, a low season. Just all depends on how you respond. How you respond. So, um, Mary, I will uh, basically uh, have you back. Thank you for. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, now uh, customer care. And this is, I think, this is uh, one of the, uh, as we finalize uh, the most important uh, you know, parts of business and growth, and most especially in the banking sector. I have called uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, data before, right there in the end, uh, some time back, some years back, really, around uh, 2014. But uh, you call the person, you're excited, you want to, hey, 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 okay. Oh, we know why. Hey, okay. I know. Uh, you know? Things like that. So basically, you find that. Uh, um, interpersonal skills, interpersonal skills, what is it that, 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 that uh, really lets, uh, you know, good customer care, and I think this is also something that, is, that I shall talk about. So let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, customer care, and how it has impact, uh, impacted on the customer perception of your brand, X by Mary, and your marketing journey, some, with, with uh, some few pieces of examples. Uh, yes, talking about customer care, it is a very important item to take care of when you're running a business, especially when you're growing, you know. Uh, customer care is uh, basically how you respond to a client, how, the, the, should I say, the urgency in which you take a client's request. Uh, clients are our bosses that we accept. Uh, we know we have so many decisions sometimes. 
but when a client contacts you and they want care, they, they expect quick feedback from, from whatever they have sent you. Uh, it could be a picture, it could be um, uh, inquiry, let's say on, on a price, and uh, sometimes they want to know what you, you offer actually. Uh, this is the, like the biggest opportunity for you to save yourself. You don't know who you're talking to. It could be a very big deal that could change your business and move it from one, one level to another. Uh, it could be a very good, uh, should I say, recommendation that, that may actually get you 50 more orders for that month. You never know how big that one client is, yes. Um, so what, you, what, what I've actually done for my customer care, I take, first of all, I try to respond real time when a client sends in an order. It could be at night, sometimes I, I be on my phone even at 2 a.m. I could have just woken up and maybe it's a client from the U.S. whose time, time zone is very different. I don't ignore, I respond, and sometimes they actually, they're ordering for that very day. But to them, it's going to be at night when it's daytime time for you. So they want to kind of like give you this order and give you all the details so that you don't look for them when they are sleeping. Yes, so, so real-time feedback is very important. And I've had quite a uh, return of those clients just because I respond on time and I've never even met them, yes. I have learned that even people you work with, you need to teach them the same. It could be a delivery man, maybe a border person. He could run a puncture as he delivers the cake and delays, let's say, 30 minutes more. How does he explain that to the client? Yes, you're going to tell the client, yeah, you know what, the guy got an issue on the way, please wait for him. And then probably the guy reaches and is very arrogant about it, and you lose that client. So sometimes you, you need to even take to talk to these people and, and teach them how best they can talk to a client in a certain scenario. I've lost a client once by a delivery person. This person liked that they had set off from wherever they were supposed to deliver the cake to. I think they got some other business along the way and chose to first handle that. And this client was calling me and I was busy telling them that the border guy had set off, you know. So the, deliv the border guy was actually delivering, uh, he was carrying someone to deliver for me, the person that I was working with, yeah. So this guy, reached and uh, the client was very much. I think she had even used a set order, just wait for the cake, to leave her office to come and wait for a cake in Tinder. And uh, I think when, when the, the client asked, why are you late, this guy said, this is Uganda. Like, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The client gave me that feedback directly and I talked to this person and I realized sometimes these people need to get because they may be stressed by the events of the day and they don't know how to respond. So that could affect your brand. So you need to train your team as well when it comes to customer care. Yeah. Yeah, so about, about pasty pricing, how do you, uh, you know, price your home? Let's put it depending on the, uh, you know, who is your um, uh, customer. Do you price uh, you know, according to, to the customer who is coming or you have a standardized uh, you know, kind of system? Uh, what happens, I think, with baking is uh, uh, it's input versus output. Like, basically, you're going to put in a certain amount of money to, to, to make one product and have it delivered to the client. So what I do, I, I usually don't let a client go because, you see, this client that is probably giving you a small order at some point will give you a wedding order. So I never ever express myself as, as being expensive. I try to, you know, like understand where does this client come from. It could be my older man trying to order. He can't order for a cake of a hundred thousand, but well, he could be a constant customer because well, he knows that I make everything. So what I do, I usually offer, I usually offer, should I say, a range of products that fit within the client's budget, unless if it's way too low, and uh, and I first explain to the client before I actually let them know that I can't make the order. You know, I will tell them, you know what, um, because of this cost and this cost, I cannot manage to, to fund this, this thing here. Yeah? But I never let the client go without knowing what I can offer, even to the bare minimum. So that's how I do it.
So basically, I can do cakes for those that are very low and those that are very high, depending on what they want. I just simply price and give them a range that fits within their budget. Okay, well, that's uh, quite uh, interesting and amazing. So, I think uh, after I will, uh, I will turn to Asha Steele, after Mary's uh, uh, contribution of that. Uh, well, on the same issue actually, which is uh, which is uh, uh, customer care, and then probably how you price your products. Okay. Uh, about customer care. Customer care has actually given me another personality that I didn't know that I had. My uh, my first customer that I have learned so much from my family have become my customer. Not that they buy, but my God, having children and a husband, you know how you need to play customer care. Yeah? You negotiate. You <laughs> so. Um, Learning customer care from business actually made also my family life better, I can say. Because um, I had to start practicing self-control. When you know which words to say and which words to just fight and say, Chino Panchi, okay? That came in handy. It, uh, I, I would rather that it made me a better mother, I think. <laughs> yeah, and it made me a better wife. I started practicing anger control because sometimes a client will call you and it is completely and completely their fault. So you have to breathe in, breathe out, and come back with one smiling. We yeah, are sorry. We can make it right. But let me give you an example. I have a client who ordered for meat sometime back like three years ago. I learned to explain it to clients. But so this client calls me. First call to my assistant. Um, oh no, Asha? No, this is Asha's assistant. I want to talk to Asha personally. So, some that I've trained my assistant that to handle issues, unless it is out of his hands, let him send that client. So, he did that, he sent that client. He, he just called me and said, yeah, This one, yeah, who I've sent to you is on fire. So, on fire. So, I get the phone. Uh, oh no, Asha, yes. On Pacha, they can go call it. Uh, before I am even like trying to explain, she is spitting the fire, like, spitting fire. So you know that thing where you just put the phone here and you, and you, and you. So after she spit all this fire, all this fire, saying all these words, how even my kids would eat if they were saying we have them forget. Um, I'm like, I am very sorry about that. Uh, let me. Double check with you, make I a mistake on my side. Which cake did you order for? I ordered for meat! <laughs> okay. That is how a meat cake tastes like. How? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, meat, because even in Colgate there is meat. So that is where it gets the meat taste from. If you had told me that it is your first time to eat meat, I wouldn't have advice because sometimes people see your menu and they go for a cozy one. So, like we are sorry, um, if the kids can't eat the meat, let me send you cupcakes. Oh, you can do that? Hey, okay, okay, you do that. Those are the clients we deal with every day. It is completely their fault, but they make you feel bad that you are at that point where you're not sure they But it's you ask for what you don't know. What, what, what? Which is not right. So that kind of like keeps you down and down. Then we have clients who lie. Um, they will say, You told me there is transport. I always keep my clients on WhatsApp as evidence. Even when you call an order, even my assistant knows, unless it is an emergency order, but if you order it for tomorrow or the other day, please send me a WhatsApp. So we discuss. So now, you find a client, now we had a client who had a, a double tiered cake. Uh, it was a, I was supposed to meet you, Uba, but I was like, it's better icing. I told my sister, do you want to just drive it there? It's Bukolobi. Just take it. Um, and it was night. Like, we are risking curfew, what, what. They take the cake and it reaches there and the client is like, I'm not giving you transport. 
And he's like, okay, let me first call Asha and find out if you agree with that. I'm like, like, no, you don't have to call me. Are you stupid? Yeah? I've told you I'm not giving you transport. What, what, what? Yeah? Go, 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 go. You know, like, some of you like, really a dog, yeah? So my assistant calls me and he's like, I still have that cake in the car. And the, good enough, the client had paid for the cake. I still have the cake in the car. Um, but the client is not paying transport. I'm like, no, he should give you fuel at least 15,000. Because Uber was going to cost him like 30,000. So I'm like, 15,000 of fuel. You know, you don't understand. Then we ask the client to call you. So by the time he calls the client, the client is like, hey, you, who, 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 who. I'm like, OK. Calmly, I told him, you know what? We can't go through this at this time. It's coffee time. Let that cake come back. <laughs> come and pick it. Then you know the kind of person that person went through to bring that cake to me. It is just fuel. And if you are, if you knew that, because we called the whole day and the guy refused the cake, eh? so one day it delivered at the party to surprise the girlfriend. So there, there are times when, yes, I am doing customer care, but you have to also know when you to be manipulated. And the worst crime we committed was to insult <coughs> us. You're stupid, you're what? So I did insult him back. I wasn't true, I come and told him, let it come back to Nadia. And you can't pick it. Instead of us doing all this for you, we risked a few time to deliver. 15k is just cost of fuel, not even charging you extra. Uber would have taken 30,000. So I was like, okay, now, madam, forgive me, huh? Forgive me, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> My assistant said, you handed over 30,000 and told him, I'm sorry. And now that was someone who was in a manipulation mode, wanted to manipulate us simply because, and, and the next time he ordered, he was like, you know, when someone does that, I put a stamp on their nail. So when they ordered, I got back to, to, to throw our charts to know what went wrong. So the next time we ordered, I'm like, are you ready to pay transport or are you going to pay it? But then I'm willing to pay transport. I even tipped your boy by the way. <laughs> so it kind of teaches you, do not fight with such a client. Don't. Just stand your ground in a calm way. Don't, don't lose your temper. Don't lose your cool. Stay smiling, but make your point. Delivered. So that has, uh, customer care has to be intertwined with you. You can't do that and then you turn and back, to, back at your child when they break a car. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's an accident. Mm -hmm. So you look at them and you're like, it's okay, it's okay. If you can do it to a client, you can do it to your child. If you do it to a client, you can understand your husband not removing shoes when they're entering the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I shall ask you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, last week, uh, brand positioning and uh, you know how you position yourself as a person. Now you, you as Asha Batenga. By the way, she's as, uh, she's she's uh, Asha Batenga Juba, right? So I realize many of us have not even uh, noticed that, but she's Asha Batenga Juba, though she's known as Asha Batenga as a brand name. So. Apart from branding yourself as a business, what makes you tick in the world of business, uh, you know, in terms of, because in Benin you must become a brand, right? Do we agree? Yeah. Yourself, you must be a brand by who you are and how you, your, your interpersonal skills, how you engage with people, how you, uh, you know, how, 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 who you are basically. So um, how have you been able to do that? And how can anyone also, you know, how can someone like Julius also brand themselves as a, as a person. Okay, um, that is a very long topic, but I, I'm going to try so much to bring it together. Uh, a personal branding, it starts with you as a human being. What do you want? What do you stand for? What are your values? Who you are when, when someone looks at you, what do they see first? You understand? Do they see a nun? Do they see a pastor? Do they see whatever they see? is what they will take before you talk about who you are. That is personal branding. My personal branding is surrounding cakes. When you look at me, or when you hear Asha Bating, what is the first thing that is going to drop into your head? A cake or something related with baking. You understand? Um, if, you, if, if it goes another way, you will ask, hey, Asha has gone into that direction. So, personal branding, 
um, sometimes we have people in our phone book, but they don't even know that we are bakers. That is an issue with your personal branding. You're going to post to so many people power, um, some girls in Kalere, um, you're going to go put your pasta, something, but not you yourself. So everyone will be like, hey, we are, we are the option. Hey, how long you will take her also? You understand? Mm -hmm. There you know that your personal branding is not speaking for, your, for itself. You have to explain to someone. You understand? So personal branding starts from that. Um, on social media, because it is where we go out free of charge and express who we are. Um, there are things that uh, you shouldn't even share with social media if you want to grow your brand. As in such kind of way that is not benefiting your brand. It shouldn't even appear. You shouldn't go on walls with people. I've never fought with anyone. Even if you have a problem with me, I will give you an image when I'm laughing at you and I will move on to the next post. You understand? I'm not going to come and say, yeah, who has in those things. Social media doesn't forget. The internet doesn't forget. This may be a future client and just in the search history we are fighting with them. Avoid gossip. Me, I gossip with my siblings and my close friends. Even if you have bakers sitting around, don't gossip. That doesn't reflect well on your personal brand. You understand? It just puts you down instead of elevating you. So uh, always maintain that professional relationship. I am, I am not a corporate person. I failed to fit into that corporate because I can't tell you that you've been in a certain way like this. Myself, I'm not. I like joking and I'm a free person, but I have boundaries. You understand? You're not going to come and say, on my WhatsApp and you send me, say, a sex video and I will send you a laughing emoji. I will either block you or tell you never send me such. You understand? Because, first of all, my phone can access my, my children. Then I'm doing business on WhatsApp. If you're there for leisure, you will send those who are doing leisure. Meet business. So people should know what you stand for. You, you, you know that, like, you can't be this serious that every day you're sending a picture in your chef jacket. No. But you have those values that define you and that I'm not going to share upon. I'm not going to share. Deadly posts. Those who are in my WhatsApp groups, I think they're like 750. You've never seen me share even a post of job, right? Oh, seven. Oh, where I support. And if I have, I can post because I'm the admin. Do you understand? You've never seen me post something from my pastor. Because I believe we all have our beliefs. We have what we believe in. I can't force mine on you. So you have to create a line where I, I saw different things moving around COVID. People put forwarding, forwarding, I even had to block them from that group. Of like we're here for positive energy, not negative energy that you're dying of tomorrow. So maintain what you preach, don't do it. If you say this is strict business, do business. Um, then always be clear with what you want as a leader. You may say, I'm not a leader. No, if you're a baker and you're leading a company, you're a leader. So when you get a team, they have to know what you stand for. So you have to be clear and they should know that this is going to land you into problem. You, you are not going to define them with you know, long nails, that eh, and you smile about it. You have to show them that is not good. So you have to be clear with what you want. When you're on Facebook, you have to know this is a good friend, I block. If I see you doing funny comments, I'll block you and I'll not regret. You have to pay attention to other people's needs. When there is a need, when bakers uh, need it, like say suppliers, we need suppliers, we need schools, we need this. It was like, okay, cake shop can do this. It can bring together other people. So you have to look at people's needs and embrace them. Needs can be even your workers who are with you. What are their needs? You might find that the guy even walks to work, and then when they reach at nine or eight, you're quarreling with them. Find out what is their need. Why are you late? Why are you late at work? So being a leader entitles you, not you to have the wings. You have to calm down. This week I've been so angry. 
at people. Let me leave it here. I, I told them I'm going to volunteer registering them with, with the registration company. Hmm? Like three weeks ago, they sent their names, they sent their money, then I've been liaising with the guys at URSB, they're giving me like, no, send this, send that, I tell people send this, they're already giving me their money, so I am in a funny place. Please send this for not sending. People do, people please, people please, then you call their notification. Even inbox them and they're not responding. And you have their money, don't have their paperwork, and their names are going to expire in that system because after 30 days, it automatically expires and you pay afresh. And I'm dealing with adults. You know how that hurts? Customer care comes in, you're like, Asha, I mean, you started it, you have to finish it. But it is part of being a leader. It's not going to always be comfortable. You have to understand that time comes and you are off that comfortable spot and you have to help others who are in need. The rest, you leave it to God. Well, thank you so much, Marcia. And, uh, well, I think now I'll turn to Mary now. Uh, well, we're coming to the close now. And uh, let me just invite Mary to actually give us, uh, you know, his sort of final remarks and, uh, and any other information that uh, you would wish to pass on. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Julia. Yes, I hope we've really learned a lot from this. Yes. 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 One of my remarks for the day is uh, never let a client go unhappy. Yeah, sometimes it may cost you a thing for your business. Let's say it's an order that was not uh, done well. You can always redo for them something better, either cheaply or even for free. It may keep that client longer for more ten years with you. Yes. Um, um, Understand the request from a client first before you start working on it. It could be as simple as a birthday cake, it could be a wedding cake. It may not be the color that maybe you understand so well. There are colors that are very confusing. You can just look at the tablecloth, that color. A client would send you that when it was maybe uh, taken with a professional camera and you see it as blue or something. Or it ask and understand the client's need. If it's a flavor, let them know if you've done it before, how best do you do it. If possible, do a cake testing with them. Let them understand what you're going to offer on their wedding day so they don't get disappointed and refuse to pay your balance. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this industry is very tough. People always uh, act when they are happy. When they're not happy, they do not want to pay. <laughs> uh, and uh, or is uh, yes, uh, when you're going to work on a cake design, try to research about it if you've never done it before. Try to use YouTube, uh, contact people that have been in the industry longer, and try to be friendly. Don't do it in a very commanding way. Yeah, people are always ready to share if you come in from a good position or you want to learn. Yes. Try to teach yourself certain things. Sometimes you can't afford to pay for some classes, but you can teach yourself. And you've seen so many bakers. I think Asha can tell you that. Maybe she, she didn't have a certificate in baking, but she's doing one of the best things in the country. So you can learn a lot by teaching yourself. Don't look down on, on what you can actually teach yourself from all these resources available. Um, the other thing is maybe uh, in this industry, since you get orders of emergency most of the time, if you never plan certain things for so long, you should always have stock with you in your bakery or in your house. Try to have at least some number of rice and sugar, some prestige, so that even if you receive an order and it's coming to evening and you can't send a order anywhere, you can still process it and maybe you can finish it the next day. Yes? Uh, and also, when you stock a big quantity, it can help you save some money because then you will buy things cheaply. For some, for some quantities, you could even cut, cut out the, the retail person and go directly to the supplier who could give you a much, much bigger discount. So that's something I've really realized and I think it can help us. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mary. Please give it up for Kevin.
Yeah, you're boy. 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 You're So they know me for long, long years ago. Then I feel, feel has also been my body. You know, then I got to know if it was a banker. That's girl, she was all the things, and I didn't think it was a banker. When she told you about collaboration, she didn't like. She told you, bring me cake. Why that it's my birthday? Why that it's my daughter's birthday? Bring us cake. That's when I realized that actually if it was a banker. At first I didn't know. So she's not afraid of supporting bankers. Thank you for that. William moves and moves and moves and trains people, gives them hands-on training. People are selfish with their skill. If people are willing to share their skill with you, even if you pay them. A skill sometimes, when you, when you get a skill, it is priceless. Because you add in your personal touch and everything. So some people can't depart with their skills. So if you get people like Vinan, William giving you part of who they are, you really have to appreciate them. Clap for them. Yes, so I like I very much. Julius, what do you want to talk about in my time? Yeah, um, the Kampala Tech Fair. Uh-huh. And uh, basically, the Kampala Tech House Business Summit. Okay, now, um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Thank you for having that hand that you learn. Personally, I do not stop learning. I learn every day, every single day. Even with a small comment someone posts, it is learning for me. And because I don't get a lot of time to sit down and read books like I used to, my learning is around Baker. Someone may even do a small comment, but to me it is knowledge, it is wisdom. When I hear something, I want to learn more. So when you see people going out of their way to come sit down and listen, it's not because they are idols, it's because they are hungry for knowledge, which is a very, very good thing for our human, for our brain and our soul. So clap for yourself. So um, now about Kampala Fair. It is demanded for actually right now I had a meeting I don't know if the time I had a meeting at 230 where I was meeting a very huge company that wants to be like the next big sponsor of Kampala Tech Fair but I'm like I am not yet sure of this year but it's okay when you're sure it will be the idea it is so demanded for and it has opened our eyes to so many things that so I learned it is an exciting time that takes a lot of work but uh Let me see the government policies and how the pandemic is going before I can say it's happening or not. Once the pandemic, we have learned to live with it, and the government measures the kind of law events, then I can announce the next state fair. For now, let us watch the space. It's lives fast. We don't want to die after eating cake. So the perfect time will get the final announcement. Maybe the year. Okay, you can have for that. <laughs> now, about the summit. Now, the summit is smaller, so it is easier to manage. We are not bringing in the people who are testing cake. You understand? We are bringing bakers and the other players in the market. We bring in the banks like you have seen. We bring in people who we know that can add value to your baking business. You bring in different suppliers, say machinery. You, you understand so that it is a baker, supplier, and the other players in this meeting. So that is easy to control. You can have it, and it can be something that can work for us. So that by the time we get to the Kabbala Cake Fair, at least there is something that is keeping us going. And it is easy to manage small numbers, say 200, than managing. 5,000, because last year Kampala Tech Fair was 5,000. So imagine how you can handle the 5,000. Yes, clap for that, because the event is growing. So now, 
for this one we are going to leave it numbers maybe we will do 200 and then we can have the other people can come on equip us with knowledge show us what they have bakers and suppliers so that will be what will happen we want to know more about the financial interest how you can get financing how you like uh, the MD the CEO was here who said sometimes we get loans yet we are not even ready for loans so we need such kind of knowledge as bakers to know if there are, I need an open is there a company that can buy this open for me and I pay in installments you understand such kind of thing so we need that as bakers because I have seen because of that I call it Kameza money we are fooled by that Kameza money oh we, I have gas husband bought gas then um, there is your car. What do I need? I need eggs. And you end up cheapening the cake to flour and eggs. So when a client gets your cake, they don't know that for you, you have all the facilities at home. And they're getting the same cake from someone who's running a business and who's renting like William. And they'll be like, you know, such a boss, they're only up at the same cake for 50,000. But for him, he's calculating from water to power to everything. And for you, you are just calculating how, how much eggs are going to buy the rest husband has provided. And also the downside of that is that when husband is tired of you, yeah, there is a of course some asset that's like I get, of course that could be baking, no, in this house. And then you come playing victim. One side I am only to rock on a baking. But you're not contributing to that house. You are just this tech or Jorona or you serve a year and Kenya, you get it. So let us work together. Find your strength, find your weakness, like William said, the things that you look at and you underlook and actually bring you money. Look at what you're doing as for. When they are taking a, a, a cake, don't be that person who is straight that her arms and the are okay. I don't do the small things. You don't know where. As long as you're still doing what you do best, I don't do other things, and you swear I'm not going to stay with you. You will not go hungry when you learn to do, when you learn to be that entrepreneur. Better than for you all the time. I, I would have been comfortable with Kekno because it is doing well and it was doing well. But I was like, okay, let me do the magazine. Let me do Kek Fair. Because every time I get it, just like thinking, what do I do next? What do I do next? Uh, lastly, when your dad is there, have like passion. Don't do copy paste. Don't copy. Because everyone is doing it and we know. Let it come from a point of knowledge, understanding that business. Get to get it. I'm not saying passion. Passion might be like, so sometimes that passion doesn't put food on the table. You get it. You get it. You get it. And they're like, no, no, it's my passion. Forget about passion. Calculate what is putting food on the table. You may, I'm calling it food, I'm not saying that you are the man of the house, but something that can help you support your family. You understand? You know, um, when we talk about women emancipation, women financial literacy, everything about women, we are not saying that we should underlook our husbands. No. What we are trying to say is that every time you have something to bring on the table, it's rare you will be beaten. It's where you're very, very rare you're going to be emotionally abused because you have something to contribute. But every time when you wake up in the morning and you say that, I'm at that, I'm on the pump. That's You understand? Now tell me, a guy is very tired, has come back home, and you're like, when I'm in the pump, when I'm in the beach, the guy pushes you very well. That is frustration. You understand? But, if you're one who is working, you're like, can Kakati, I will contribute to ABC and be the next guy there with you. Tell me, every, 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 your quarrels will be different. We don't come running and I'm going to make a simo. Yeah, I'm such a thing. So, let us as women equip each other, help each other to your God is there. We work together because when you are, they say, when you are alone, you're walking, but when you're meeting, you're running, you move faster. Because when you call Phil and you're like, Phil, how do I do it? Now, what? Well, imagine you have used even a thousand bundles, then you're not still getting it. So, work together, love each other, be hungry for knowledge, 
the rest leave it to God. Thank you, uh, Asha. Uh, well, I think, I think now it's closed, but Sarah, uh, Sarah is there before she actually cuts the eyes out because uh, she has very, very important information. So just in one minute, one minute. Yes, yeah, so otherwise, uh, but anyway, let's, you first. Uh. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I was so blocking him out there. Hello everyone. Thanks goes to our speakers of the day, Asha, thanks by Mary, Phil Almighty, and uh, William. You all know us through the Cake Decoration class, and uh, we're always delighted to give you better and better every day. We have good things coming this year. We haven't forgotten about you, our dear beloved thinkers. So, what, why I'm here today, those who came early alone, my name is Alina Sarah. I happen to publish a book called My Order Book. So many people have been asking, what is My Order Book? What do I need My Order Book? When do I need it? What is it used for? So I posted for a few minutes to explain to you why you need it, when you need it, where you need it, who needs it, okay? So briefly, My Order Book helps bakers to know the dates of the event, when the cake is needed, because we normally find problems reason why I came up with this book, I always would mix up orders, the type of order and when the order is going. So, when I went into the WhatsApp groups of Ferro Bakers, I found we have the same problem. Because someone will come out like, guys, help me sell this cake because I mixed up the pickup date, I mixed up the order. And I was like, so this is not my only problem. We are many with this problem. I was like, how can we solve this? Because I'll write on a piece of sheet like this and lose it. I'll send the information in my phone, sometimes I lose that uh, if you call that. So I found it's a big problem that maybe a few of us will face. So this book basically helps you to fix the event date, know when the cake is going, when it is coming, when you can bake it, when you can deliver it. Some applies to the delivery point, because sometimes you bake the cake fine, but you don't know where this cake is going. You've not asked the client. You, you end up surprising the client at the end of the day. You, you, you can't say, but you didn't tell me you need to deliver. It's like, but you need, uh, you need to deliver that cake. But when you ask for all this and know where the client, the cake is going, you happen to even fix and close your deal, first go. Like, if your cake is going to Nutuba, this is the amount, this is the place, you know, you get all that information first hand. Then the other cost, sometimes you know you have to bake salad cake, but how much is it? Because you did not note it down, you end up forgetting. How much is the order? But if you have this book, because you took in the information, then you will know this type of order is going here, this place, and this amount. Then you not mix up your orders. Then uh, also it helps you in plant retention. How many of us always call on our client, like a vendor, the year, Christmas? Look at that. Really? This book will help you to always check on your clients once in a while. I advise every baker to do what you call plant retention. Call on your clients, wish, wish them a Merry Christmas. Wish them a happy insight is coming. But how will you do all that if you lost the information, if you lost their contacts? But with this book, you can always be like, oh, Insta is on the way. I need to wish my clients happy. I need to let them know there is a discount coming. You get your book, you open, and then you call every client because you have your data. Maybe you have lost your phone in a year, but now you have your book. And when this book is done, you buy more books because it's placed at the end of the day. Then, it also helps you to know the flavors and take notes. We don't take notes on clients' orders. Sometimes, people have restrictions. Don't put sugar, don't put this, I don't like your cream. When it's cream, make it like this. All those nitty gritty details need to be noted down, but you're not going to note them in your phone. So if you have this book, there's an option where you have notes to write down. Note down everything, everything critical, different, what? the client is telling you, you have an option where to write it down. And then it helps you in time management and order management. Like I said, before time management, you know when the cake is going. Order management, you know which order you're making and when it's going. Those who want this book, it goes for only 15,000 shillings with me or with all my cake suppliers. For example, Discount Shop, Chikuo, Baker's Brewing, Valentina, Boy Merits with Flavia and Irene, and uh, Internet Baker's Yard, 
Czech Republic that is to open. They have a booking stock. It will not go beyond or below. It's only 15,000 shillings. And uh, remember one thing. An informed client is an empowered customer. So, I've informed you. You're empowered. You can purchase my order book. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, sir. Before I go, one request. I have a request. I wanted to say thank you to Asha Bateka. In front of all these people, you people need to know this is an amazing woman. I think said from God, she has helped me in promoting this book. Above all, I do aprons. She has helped me promoting all without any cost. People want money. But she's the kind of person who's like, oh, you just see that post going in viral and you're like, wow. So Asha, thank you for that kind heart. I always appreciate you there. Like,